it's time to get some night vision on the cheap. Let's get started. Featuring Chinesium, more Chinesium, all of the Chinesium, and a literal lead brick. That's right, no clickbait. As you can see with the list, I spent just over $1,500. I'm okay with rounding down if you are. Sorry for spoiling the surprise. Obviously, I bought a lot of Chinese equipment. That was to keep the price down. Although, there is one item on that list that you'll probably need help with and probably why you're watching this video right now. And that's buying the nods. You're gonna need to be smart, you're gonna need to be fast, and you're gonna need to have a little bit of luck to be able to buy some nods for a good price. Okay, be real honest with me right now. Yeah. Have you ever masturbated with these on? Oh yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. spooge glows. So cool. For my night vision device, I used Facebook to buy it, specifically using these two groups right here. In all, you have about 150,000 members split between the two, and you can find basically anything you want related to night vision. Nods, lambs, optics, even some homo gear stuff. And while it's true that you can use some dedicated forums to find night vision, I liked Facebook because it was easy to use and simple to learn. And well, you get about 40 to 50 night vision devices for sale every day. Can't beat that. Before we go into my night vision device and why I chose it, I wanted to show two examples quick. Uh, you can call them a tale of two nods. For this first one, everything seems good to go. For 2000 bucks, this is a PVS that's a decent deal all day long in 2024, and the included video shows no major issues. But, just like the movie Shrek, there's some onions to peel. First, when buying used nods, having a view pointing directly at a white or light color wall helps identify any blems that are present. The fact that this listing doesn't include a clean performance pick may be a little suspect. Speaking of which, there is no call out of what generation tube the device has. If you look closer into this photo of the housing, you can see that this PVS is an AGM NL1 Plus model. Going to AGM's website, you would find out that this is a Gen 2 device. Now, I'm not bashing this listing or the seller for lack of information or for the fact that this PVS is a Gen 2 unit. But take this as a clear warning for new night vision buyers. AGM is more times than not incredibly overpriced. AGM currently has this model line listed for $3,000 new, and you will not get your money back when you try to sell the unit. Now, let's move on to this Morovision unit. Besides the slight misspelling of that description, there's nothing overly suspicious. True, the white wall picture is of poor quality, but the seller mentions that they would video call you to show the device working, which is a big plus. The seller also has a vouch from another Facebook user, which is a good sign in addition to the user being a top contributor in the Facebook group. Although there is no spec sheet or additional manufacturer info, for 1700 bucks, this unit could be a great way to get into the night vision game. Cheap, fast, and reliable. These traits are usually used for what features you want in a car. Pick two. For night vision, I picked out my own. Clarity, price, and weight. Do you want a clear set of lightweight nods? well, you'll be paying for them. Do you want a cheap PVS-14? It's possible, if you're okay with blemishes. As far as how my decision went, I chose cheap and clear, presenting the epitome of cheap night vision, the Armasite Sirius. With only one small blemish that I literally have to zoom in to show you, and a low price of 1250 bucks, this device appears to have it all. It can take AA or CR-123 batteries, has manual gain with auto gating to protect the tube, and has a ruggedized body that Armasite touts to have the ability to be weapon mounted. However, that's where the great stuff ends. One pound, that doesn't sound like much, right? At the gym, it's a trivial weight that you wouldn't even worry about. A 16 ounce steak would leave you pretty full, but can still be eaten. But for night vision, that's a huge number. The Sirius weighs one full pound with a battery. That's 33% heavier than a typical PVS-14, and you'll feel it. Not just from the weight, 
but also for the fact that the unit itself is larger and hangs off the front of your head further. More weight equals more counterweight on the helmet, which means more weight on your neck. The Sirius is a huge unit, and that's not even the worst part. While the view through the Sirius is clear, it's also significantly smaller than on PBS. Taking a look at both of the viewing lenses, you can really see the lack of field of viewability. And if that wasn't enough, the Sirius also has a significant fisheye effect. To show what this means, take a look at this view sweep. On the outer edges, notice how the view gets warped. While this doesn't make the device unusable, comparing it to a PBS doesn't do it any favors. The PBS view sweep goes by with little to no distortion that's apparent to the user. By the way, I should probably explain where that PBS came from. My friend bought it for 1900 bucks, which is a pretty solid deal considering the lack of blems and the fact that it came with a J-arm. Looking at these two units is a clear example of the age-old, you get what you pay for adage. Although the view through both may be comparable due to no major blems, the weight, field of view, and fisheye effect of the Sirius are all huge negatives that are reflected in the price. This PBS was 650 bucks more expensive than my Sirius. That's a lot of money that could be used for other things, such as buying all the accessories needed to run your new set of nods. And on that note, I think it's time to talk about the 1.4 billion pound grill in the room, buying Chinese knockoff or airsoft equipment for night vision use. Here, we have an OpsCore bump helmet with a real Wilcox night vision mount, along with some contacts for hearing protection. For the budget option, we have a Amazon airsoft helmet with a knockoff Wilcox night vision mount and using some walkers that I modded for hearing protection. You can watch that video if you want. Even though my setup has functioned well during my fitment test, as well as walking at night with it, it's definitely not duty rated in the slightest. For one, the helmet mount is incredibly loose. I had to shim it with electrical tape so that the night vision mount would rattle less. It should also go without saying that the actual construction of the helmet, as well as the actual cushioning, is far worse on the airsoft helmet versus a real ops core although you could technically upgrade the cushioning. But going back to that mount, the knockoff mount also has a lot of play in it, and I'll put it up on screen so you can see it. Whereas the real Wilcox mount is pretty tight and rigid. That real Wilcox mount also fits into the op score pretty snugly with no play at all. And to top it off, I actually had to go through two sets of the helmet and the night vision mount to get a good one. The first helmet had terrible stitching and actually was misaligned on the chin strap, making it basically unusable. Whereas the first night vision mount that I had had even more play than this one. So I returned it to Amazon to see if I can get a better one, which I did. I know some people have better luck using the knockoff Wilcox mounts and that they'll have the same amount of play or basically just as rigid as real ones. But in my sample size of two, that wasn't the case. In literally every way, it's better to be buying the real deal piece of equipment versus the budget option. Even if you're not duty rated or in harm's way, isn't it better to be able to depend on your equipment? But hey, that's not what I did. Do as I say, not as I do. Yes, my equipment has not failed or fallen apart. I'll let you know if it does when I go to my first night shoot later next month. And lastly, Let's talk about that jam that I put on the Sirius. The generic tier none one that I found on eBay for like 30 bucks. This is the only option that you have if you want to take the Sirius and put it onto a dovetail mount. And I'm not sure why. Probably due to lack of demand. Even though none of my equipment has failed me, including this, this is kind of dodgy. There are no bump stops at all. It's just free play for 180 degrees. And it kind of makes a weird sound. If I had to guess, it's because this is actually being tensioned using just one Allen key bolt. <laughs> I don't feel the best knowing that this is holding my $1,200 investment to my head, but hey, it hasn't failed yet. So would I recommend this mount? Not at all. But if you have to get the Sirius to a dovetail mount, this is the only way.
There are adapters that you can buy, but I chose not to even try them since they would only add more weight. I know I spent a good portion of this video trash talking about equipment, and there's a good reason for it. My setup doesn't seem overly janky or unreliable. It just feels like a budget setup. If you don't remember anything else from this video, let me be clear. You get what you pay for. There is no magic cheat code to get a legit night vision setup for cheap, unless you get a hookup from a friend or a one in a million garage sale. My friend's setup costs twice as much as mine, but it's worth every dollar of that to use. As for me, I'm definitely sold on night vision, and I plan on upgrading my equipment here and there very soon. But that, that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching and Godspeed.